Okay, well, given that tangent theta is equal to negative 15 over 8, and we know that theta is in the second quadrant, right? And based on this information, we are going to figure this out. Well, we know one answer already, but anyways, uh, here is what I wanted to show you. Let me write this down again. We know tangent theta is equal to negative 15 over 8, right? And we know the definition of tangent in the xy plane. We know that this is the same as saying y over x. And the reason I want to put this down is because, you see, originally, the question is written with the negative in the front, right? Because now, if you look at tangent theta, which is y over x, and we know that y can be negative, or maybe x can also be negative, right? So we can look at this as negative 15 over positive 8, or positive 15 over negative 8, right? In the first situation, we are talking about y is being negative 15, x being positive 8. We can just take that as the point on the terminal side. And let's see what do we get. So let me just say the first case is x equals to positive 8 and y equals to negative 15. And as I said, I'm just taking this as one of a choice of x and y. Of course, you can say y is negative 30 and y and x is positive 16. Reduce that, you still get this, right? But Keep the simple, this form fraction is the best. Anyways, in this case, if you draw this real quick, just a small one because this is on the answer. x is 8, which is, let's say, it's right here, it's positive 8, and y is negative 15, which is down here, negative 15, right? This is the point, and you see the terminal size right here, and the angle, well, this is what? In the fourth quadrant, that's not what we need, right? We need to have the second quadrant. So it's not this. So now we are going to take y being positive 15, x being negative 8, okay? So we take x being negative 8, y equals to positive 15. And now I'll draw this bigger because now this is what we need. So right here, x is negative 8, let me just put it down here. Positive 15, let me just write it down here. And this is the point, and we have this terminal side here. And you see the angle goes from here to here, and we line up here, right? Um, anyways, from this picture, we draw a right triangle. You see this right here is negative 8 for the x. And the vertical distance is y equals to positive 15. How about r? r is this, pretty much the hypotenuse of this right triangle. And we know that r is equal to square root of x squared plus y squared. And you know this is square root of x, which is negative 8. Square that plus y which is 15, and you square that, and just work this out pretty much, right? Square root, uh, this is 64 plus 225, also get this 289. Take the square root of that is equal to 17. So r is equal to 17. But what I'm trying to show you is, you have to come up with the right picture and with the point that we have on the terminal side. Everything is set up right now. We have the x, y, and r. We can just finish this. Okay, for sine theta, we know this is equal to y over r. And for y, we know this is 15, and r is 17. So for this, we have 15 over 17. Moving on to cosine, we have um, x over r, which is, let me just write it down, negative 8 over 17. And then for tangent, we know this is equal to y over x, which is this over that, which is the same as that. Right, but let me just write it down. The way that I set it up for you guys, 15 over negative 8. And now we can just do the reciprocals of these to get this, right? Cosecant theta, we have 17 over 15. Secant theta, we have 17 over negative 8. For cotangent theta, we have negative 8 over 15. And this right here is it. The most important part, once again, is to use the given information to come up with the right picture Right? You see, we are talking about quadrant 2. That's why we're looking at this. Written then here. This will have been quadrant 4. And once you set this up, you know the rest is just the usual business. That's it.